Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Sulma Arias. I'm the executive director at People's Action. Uh, People's Action is a network of grassroots organizations with more than 1 million members in 30 states. And this is Care Over Cost. United Health doesn't care. Thank you for joining us today. Muy bienvenidos y gracias por acompañarnos. I'm so glad to be here with all of you tonight. We at People's Action believe that everyone deserves quality health care. Yet our healthcare system too often denies us care when we need it the most. Many of us find out when we get sick that private health insurance is really not there to protect us. Companies like United Health Insurance, uh, that, like, companies like United Health deny, delay, and refuse our claims when we need them the most. As you'll hear from our guest tonight, this is a matter of life and death. When we began to look at this issue, we realized that as long as they could keep us isolated, dealing with this claim denials alone, they could keep getting away with it. So over the past year, our Care Over Cost campaign has brought those dealing with denials into a community that supports and fights for each other. By coming together, we've been able to help people like Jen and Cardi demand the care that they need and that their claims that were denied are now answered. You'll get to hear from them tonight. And our hope is that this organizing community can help you as well. Last June, People's Action launched what we call an organizing revival. Thousands of you joined me in Washington, D.C. as we marched to the headquarters of the Advancing Health Insurance Providers Building. They are a lobbying group who work for the giant insurance companies who deny us care. We showed them our strength in numbers, and we reminded them that together as a community, we refuse to take no for an answer when our lives are at stake. Private insurance companies like United want to be too big to fail, yet too often they fail us. They take our tax dollars to boost their profits through programs like Medicare Advantage, yet they deny life-saving care. If you have been denied care, we want to hear from you. Please follow the links on you and tell us your story. Tonight, we'll hear from experts who will help us understand our healthcare system and how we can fix it. We'll also hear from people like you and me who've been denied care, people who are fighting back with care over cost. And we'll hear what every one of us can do right now to demand the care we need. So thank you for joining us tonight. Now I would like to turn things over to our MC and my dear friend, Kate Riddling from the People's Lobby in Chicago. Welcome, Kate. Thank you, Sulma, and welcome everyone. My name is Kate Lujan Redling, and I am coming to you from Chicago, my political home, where I work with the People's Lobby, and we're a proud part of the People's Action family. Here, I work to win dignified health care for every one of us and to make sure that my home state, Illinois, leads the way. Like Sulma said, we are here to hear how giant for-profit corporations like United Healthcare deny us care to boost their profits and how they want more and more of our tax dollars. We'll hear from people all across the country like Jen and Carly, who are fighting back with their Care Over Cost campaign. But first, I wanna thank our partners and each and every one of you for joining us tonight. Companies like United won't change their ways unless we unite and demand the care we need. And for me, this is personal. Five and a half years ago, my husband Chip was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis. United Healthcare and their pharmacy company, OptumRx, refused to pay for his medication that was prescribed, but because of their profiteering and shady deals, they would only cover a medication that did not work. Chip suffered. His pain got worse and worse. First, he stopped biking, then stopped swimming, and then eventually he couldn't even leave the house. At some point, he was not even able to get up and down the stairs. And this whole time, Optum denied the medication that he and his doctor knew that he needed. I was so upset I was ready to pay for this medication myself. 
but it costs over $82,000 for medicine that his doctor prescribed. That is not how healthcare should work. Not for me, not for you, not for anyone. So when I found out about the Care of Her Cost campaign and how I could connect with people all across the country who were standing up and fighting back, I jumped right in. Through Care of Her Cost, I learned how we can fight big insurance and win, that we are stronger together. I was so proud to stand with Sulma and Carly and so many of you last summer in DC. That's how we fought with Carly and Jen and so many others, and that's how we can fight with you because we are strong when we stand together. So I'd like you all to meet Rick Timmons from Washington State. Optum, the United subsidiary, denied and delayed his cancer care, even though they weren't even his health insurer. We'll hear from Rick in a minute, but first, let's watch a short video about his experience. When I first enrolled in Medicare, I chose Medicare Advantage because it seemed like it was a better deal than original Medicare. I soon had occasion to doubt that decision. I had a knee injury that began to progress into a need for a knee replacement. My doctor referred me to a very well-known surgeon at the University of Washington, but the Medicare Advantage plan denied that referral because he was not in their network. If he was not in their network, that meant it was not a financial benefit to them. That was when I became painfully aware of the fact that the financial interests of the for-profit companies were going to trump my choices for my own providers. That was only the beginning. A couple of years later, I discovered a small lump in my ear that was rather painful, and my doctor suspected a melanoma. Now, if you're familiar with melanomas, you know that effective treatment requires immediate diagnosis and treatment. So my doctor immediately sent in the request for a referral to a dermatologist who actually was in the network for the Medicare Advantage plan. However, we waited five months, five months of frequent phone calls, repeated emails, uh, resubmissions of a request for the referral by my doctor before the insurance company responded, at which point they explained that the delay was due to restructuring for purposes of improving efficiency. Hmm. I interpret that as meaning making more money. So here it is now, nine months after the original request for the referral, and I'm recovering from major surgery to remove a malignant melanoma and to explore lymph nodes to see if there was metastasis. Because of the aggressive nature and the size of the tumor, which is related to the delay imposed by the insurance company, I'm now waiting to begin immunotherapy. I'm not the only one who suffers from delays and denials by insurance companies when it's not in their financial interest. Because basically we know now that if it comes to choosing profits over medical care for patients, the insurance company's profits will always predominate. I learned what this means the hard way. And now you have a chance to avoid experiencing the same thing that I did. I can't believe what United and Optum put Rick through. Well, actually I can because they did it to us too. Claims denials affect so many of us. Please join me and welcome Rick Timmons to tell you the rest of the story. Welcome Rick. Thank you, Kate. Well, now you've heard the tale of the tale of woe that describes my experience with Medicare Advantage. I want to tell you a little more about what happened uh, after my primary care practitioner decided to refer me to a dermatologist to assess that tiny lump on my earlobe. Uh, she was concerned because I have a family history of skin cancer, including melanoma. So you can imagine how nervous I was while we waited for a response to her request for prior authorization to my Medicare Advantage company, which, by the way, was not United Healthcare, but you're going to hear more about that in just a minute. As I mentioned in the video, successful management of skin cancer, especially melanoma, requires rapid diagnosis and immediate treatment. But it took five months, multiple phone calls and emails, repeated submissions of the request for authorization before we even heard back from the Medicare Advantage company. It took a couple more months before I was allowed to see the dermatologist. And by that time, the tiny lump had more than tripled in size and was quite painful. A biopsy then confirmed that it was cancer, a malignant melanoma, a pretty dire diagnosis. It took another two months to receive authorization to see an oncologist and schedule surgery. 
So why did this take so long? Because the Medicare Advantage Insurance Company found it financially beneficial to subcontract the prior authorization process to Optum, a United Healthcare subsidiary. Optum is the octopus with tentacles extending into practice management software, electronic records, pharmacy, and even ownership of primary care and specialty practices. It's the moneymaker for United Health. Now, we know that long delays contribute to greater profits for the insurance companies. And now I can share with you that long delays also contribute to the growth and spread of cancer. Well, following surgery, due to the advanced nature of the tumor, I was put on a course of immunotherapy to try to reduce the chance of recurrence. One of the first things the oncologist had said to me was, it's too bad you couldn't get in to see us sooner. I agree. The surgery would have been less extensive, the tumor would not have been so invasive, and I would not have endured the pain, anxiety, and uncertainty, the side effects of the immunity, of the immunotherapy, nor would I have incurred with the significant medical debt that I'm now faced with. What was a financial benefit to the insurance company and to Optum and United Health was definitely not beneficial to me. So now for some more revelations about the damage United Healthcare and its subsidiaries due to our healthcare. Here's Kate. Thank you, Rick. You are absolutely right. These companies are too complex and they want to keep it that way. They build bureaucracy to hide their greed. And Optum and United Health are the same company. Yet for you and me, they point fingers at each other when they deny us care. That ain't right. Now we're gonna hear from Wendell Potter. Wendell is a courageous whistleblower who left his job as a well-paid health exec to tell the truth about these for-profit companies. Now I'll tell you, Wendell is an expert, so he's got a lot of facts and figures, but if you miss anything, don't worry. You can find it all on his website, centerforhealthdemocracy.org and his blog, Healthcare Uncovered. Wendell, welcome. Thank you, Kate, and thank every one of you for being here tonight. Denials of care affect every one of us. They are the cancer at the very heart of our healthcare system, and that's why it's so important that we fight back. So thank you all for organizing this. Thank you all for, for being a part of this. For those of you who don't know my background, uh, I spent 20 years on the dark side at two of the biggest health insurance companies in the country, Humana and Cigna. I left that career after what I've often called the crisis of conscience, and I became a, a whistleblower when the Affordable Care Act. But I'm also a former newspaper reporter and Washington correspondent, and I've returned to journalism to provide an insider, insider's perspective on how big corporations have taken over our healthcare system and what we can do about it. I hope you will check out our newsletter, Healthcare Uncovered. You can find it at wendellpotter.substack.com. Not surprisingly, I write a lot about United Health Group and its thousands of subsidiary companies. You heard that right, thousands. At last count, United now encompasses 2,642 subsidiaries that increasingly are involved in patient care, or more precisely, in blocking access to needed care. United is by far the biggest and most profitable of what some folks now call payviders. United not only is a healthcare payer, and we have to put the word payer in air quotes because it often refuses to pay for needed care, as we all know. But it's also now a healthcare provider as a result of the many physician practices and clinics it now owns. And as Kate noted, it also owns OptumRx, one of the largest pharmacy benefit managers or PBMs in the country. If there's one thing the United knows how to do well, it's how to make money. During 2023 alone, United Health Group reported $32.4 billion in profits, far more than any other healthcare company of any kind in the world, including drug makers and hospital systems. To put that $32 billion in historical perspective, United is now making more than three times as much in profits as it made just 10 years ago. If you add up the company's profits over those 10 years, you get very close to $200 billion in profits. And that makes United one of the largest and most profitable companies in the world, and in the US, 
Only Walmart, ExxonMobil, Amazon, and Apple take in more revenue than United. A few weeks ago, United Health, excuse me, a few weeks ago, Healthcare Uncovered published a report detailing more than 70 of the company's biggest acquisitions, but that was only the tip of the iceberg. Stay tuned because we're embarking on an even more ambitious project to list and explain all of those 2,642 companies that now make up United Health Group. But acquisitions are not the only way that United has been able to triple its profits in 10 years. As Kate noted, United and other big insurance companies have erected numerous barriers over the years that result in millions of Americans not being able to get the care that they need. Those barriers include the aggressive use of something called prior authorization to delay and deny needed care. And because few people go through the deliberately challenging, burdensome process of appealing those denials, United can hold on to billions of dollars that it should be paying out in claims. A second barrier is the ever-increasing amount of money that United and other insurers make patients pay out of their own pockets before their coverage kicks in. People enrolled in United's health plans at its PBM often have to pay thousands of dollars out of their own pockets before United will pay a dime. That's the main reason why 100 million Americans, 100 million, are now buried under a, a growing mountain of medical debt and why I lead a coalition of groups, including people's actions to reduce or eliminate out-of-pocket costs. A third barrier is restricting access to doctors and hospitals. In many cases, United's provider networks are very inadequate, forcing patients to get care out of network, and that results in even more out-of-pocket costs for patients. And increasingly, the in-network providers are owned by United. By using these and other barriers to avoid paying claims, and remember, these barriers affect black and brown people disproportionately. United can reward its shareholders very well through dividends and stock buybacks. Buybacks, which were illegal until the Reagan administration, increase the value of each share of stock that an investor owns. It's a gimmick that benefits no one other than shareholders and company executives. Top executive officers now get most, most of their pay in the form of stock. That means that as the stock price increases, so does their net, worth, net, their net worth. Last year, United spent nearly $7 billion buying back its own shares. That's eight times as much as it spent buying, uh, spent buying back shares in 2016. United's top executives are now among the richest people on the planet. In 2022, United paid its top five executives nearly $75 million just in 2022. Uh, almost a fourth of that went to one man, the company's CEO, Sir Andrew Witte. Most people probably still think of United as a company that sells health insurance to individuals and families and manages health benefits for employers, but that part of the company is now much smaller than the other businesses. United now from its PBM and the physician groups and clinics it owns, then from premiums. And its biggest customer is the government's Medicare and Medicaid programs. That means that as taxpayers, it's now impossible to avoid contributing to United's growing profits. And because of how United and other insurers have gamed the Medicare Advantage program, they get between 80 and $140 billion in overpayments every year from the federal government, from us. As I wrap up, I want you to remember one, the, that one of United's many subsidiaries, Change Healthcare, was hacked last month. Change Healthcare controls payments to most of America's doctors and hospitals, and the hack has put an untold number of healthcare providers in serious financial peril. Yesterday, Sir Andrew Witte was summoned to the White House to explain what happened and what the company is going to be doing to get Change Healthcare back online. And just this morning, the Biden administration announced that it has la it's launched an investigation into United and Change Healthcare. As we pointed out in Healthcare Uncovered earlier this week, United is actually benefiting financially from this hack. Its customers are still paying their premiums to United, but because providers are not getting paid, the company is sitting on a growing pile of cash, and it's now able to pad its bottom line even more by investing all that cash that it should be paying out in claims. To sum up, this one company is gobbling up our healthcare system in a very organized and strategic way and with very little constraints from lawmakers and regulators. 
as it continues to grow, the goal of improving and expanding the traditional Medicare program to include all Americans is being pushed further out of reach. If there was ever a time to become an activist, it is now. Thank you, Kate. Back to you. Wow, Wendell. I'm so angry right now. <laughs> uh, I knew the situation was bad, but companies like United Health, who doesn't care, uh, are clearly not feeling the hurt that you and I and everyday people are feeling. Medicare disadvantage is a huge drain on the funds that we've been paying into for years. They keep our money and we don't get care. And that ain't right. Now, let's hear from Jen Coffey from New Hampshire, who's been denied care by her insurance company through a private Medicare plan. Here's a quick video about it. They like to tell you, Medicare Advantage numbers are so high. Can't you tell people love it? No, we don't. We're stuck. It's the Hotel California. You can check in, but you can't get the hell out. I'm Jen Coffey from Manchester, New Hampshire, and I'm on a Medicare Advantage plan. I got breast cancer in 2013, and unfortunately, I ended up developing rare diseases, complex regional pain syndrome, and small fiber neuropathy. Complex regional pain syndrome is the most painful disease known to modern medicine. It's a horrible disease that is unrelenting torture 24-7. You feel it in your sleep. You feel it at every moment in your day. 70% of people with CRPS will attempt or consider suicide. I am one of those people. I spent over two years locked in a bed. I spent a lot of time locked in a wheelchair. I continue to find ways to come up with money to pay for all the things that my Medicare Advantage plan won't pay. They refuse. Last year, things got really rough. My rent went up $400 and my infusions are $600, right? So the money had to come from somewhere. So I started rationing them and I started having trouble just being able to get to the bathroom. And it's scary to decline that way because there's always that fear that this is gonna be the time that I decline and I don't get back out. If Medicare Advantage has it their way, they're gonna deny me care and delay me care until I'm dead. Having to chase down prior authorizations is beyond confusing. It's never ending hell. They tell you, prior authorizations keeps overutilization of medical care down. That is the biggest piece of bullshit ever. Prior authorizations deny care. Prior authorizations delay care. Prior authorizations kill people. And it's a way that Medicare Advantage companies use to make profit. Remember, they only make money when they don't have to spend it on you. If I could speak to the head of the insurance company, this is what I'd say. How do you sleep at night? How do you look in the mirror when you're spending money on your fancy suits and your fancy cars? I'm begging for a $600 infusion and they're buying yachts. They're having champagne parties for their first quarter profits, having a big celebration. And I'm here going, can you just please let me stay alive? Me and a whole bunch of other people like me don't want to die. And we paid our way. In fact, I have a premium that went up from last year to this year. They were quick to send me that bill, but they won't pay my doctor to keep me alive. What is with that? That is not health care. It's dehumanizing when you're sitting here for hours on the phone, listening to stupid hold music, wrapped in a heating blanket to try and keep the pain down. I've been told that my story is too depressing to talk about. When you're struggling and you're fighting for help and you're kind of end up begging other people to please pay attention and will you help me? Will you, will you speak with me? Because my voice alone isn't enough and you're too depressing to be heard out loud or geez we're tired of hearing that or god is that person bothering me again that makes it even harder right because all you're really wanting is somebody to tell you that your life matters that you still have something left to give the world Wow. Do you all feel what I'm feeling right now for Jen and what she's been through? That really ain't right. Jen will be joining us live in a few minutes to tell us more and say what we can do. But first, 
Join me in welcoming Megan Esaheb to tell us more about how private, private companies are hijacking our healthcare through programs like Medicare Advantage. Welcome, Megan. Thanks, Kate. Wow, no matter how many times I hear Jen's story, I get angry. When people are sick, they should be able to focus on caring for themselves, not fighting with insurers. We heard from Wendell that United Healthcare is getting paid a lot of taxpayer dollars and putting it in the pockets of its CEOs and shareholders. So let me take a step back and explain what these so-called Medicare Advantage plans are. <clears throat> You've probably heard that Medicare is a popular program. We all pay in in taxes, and then when we turn 65 or become disabled, we get to sign up for a Medicare insurance plan. People like Medicare because almost every hospital and healthcare provider in the country takes it. You get cancer or a rare disease, disease you can go to any specialist in the country. There's no out of network. Doctors and hospitals like it because it pays the bills on time. In 2003, Congress passed a law that allowed for privatization of Medicare. Over the past several years, that privatization through so-called Medicare Advantage has quietly and off the radar accelerated to the point where this year, the majority of Medicare beneficiaries are on a private plan. The corporations would like you to think that this is because they're better at, than the government at providing health care. But we know that's not true. It turns out Medicare Advantage plans are getting paid more per person from the government than it's paying for people on traditional Medicare around $140 billion a year more. So United Healthcare, the biggest provider of Medicare disadvantage is bringing in more money per person, telling people what doctors and hospitals they can and cannot go to, and then denying people care and refusing to pay doctors and hospitals for the care received. That's how they make their money. United Healthcare has been sued by the US government for fraud and overbilling and Medicare Advantage plans. Some rural hospitals have even recently blamed Medicare Advantage for having to close down some of their services or shut down entirely. Some of these claims denials are the difference between life and death or solvency and bankruptcy. Many are smaller where United Healthcare nickels and dimes people. We worked with a woman on a United Healthcare Medicare Advantage plan a retired teacher who needed hip surgery. <clears throat> Her surgeons needed to remove some old hardware during the surgery, and then United Healthcare wrongly charged her $100 for that old hardware removal. We worked with her to fight back and win. However, when United Healthcare does this millions of times over, most people just pay. I know I've paid for me a medical test that my doctor ordered and my insurance re refused to cover. I didn't feel like I could fight back and I was worried about my credit. But these smaller claims denials add up to huge corporate profits. To be clear, traditional Medicare is not perfect. Rising healthcare costs, largely driven by big pharma and hospitals, have pushed up out-of-pocket costs in traditional Medicare. The Inflation Reduction Act took a major step forward in bringing down out-of-pocket drug costs for seniors on Medicare but we still need to improve benefits and lower costs in traditional Medicare. Name anyone for choosing a Medicare Advantage plan. For some healthy people, the upfront costs can be lower under Medicare Advantage. The problem is when people get sick, too many people get treated like Jen and people get stuck on Medicare Advantage. In most states, if you wanna leave a Medicare Advantage plan and go back to traditional Medicare, it's hard and sometimes impossible to get on traditional Medicare and buy a supplemental health insurance plan that covers the gaps in Medicare. Again, the solution is simple. Congress should invest in expanding traditional Medicare so people don't have to buy supplemental insurance. Improving and expanding Medicare is an important stepping stone to winning Medicare for all. But if we allow United Healthcare to drain the Medicare trust funds for its private plans and to, to continue to spend billions on advertising and calling seniors to get them on Medicare Advantage, improving traditional Medicare will, will become harder. Right now, United Healthcare lobbyists are lobbying for the federal government to pay them even more money for their Medicare Advantage plans. The Center for Medicare and Medicare Services has proposed a 3.7% rate increase for next year. 
health insurance lobbyists are saying that this is a cut to Medicare. To Medicare. This is simply not true. The Biden administration will decide the final rate hike at the end of this month, and they are being lobbied hard by health insurance companies to give Medicare disadvantaged plans even more taxpayer dollars. We must counter that lobbying effort. Back to you, Kate. Thank you, Megan. Well, I think we can all agree that the privatization of Medicare has gone too far, and we all lose when these companies deny us care and feed their profits. But the good news is, there is something that we can do about it, and we can do it right now. And here to tell us is none other than Jen Coffey from Be A Hero. Welcome, Jen. Thanks, Kate. Despite the generous rate increases CMS doled out to the corporations, I still saw an increase in my premium. For-profit healthcare across the board has decreased coverage. Is it any surprise that I'm forced to foot the bill for many of the very medications and treatments I need to live. They call that controlling medical costs. My doctor certainly didn't see an increase. Heck, he doesn't even see enough money to administer my care. Right now, we're arguing over a four hour infusion and the less than $2 they contributed towards that vital care. These corporations do nothing to increase positive outcomes in medical care. So don't fall for their bullshit. Right now, organizations like People's Action and Be a Hero are running a petition for President Biden, asking him to not fork over more money to insurance companies like United Healthcare. If my story upsets you, I need you to sign the petition, and then I need you to share it. Not once, not just for one second of your time, but over and over again. The only way we can gain a foothold over greedy corporations is to make enough noise to rattle the White House windows. In fact, tomorrow on March 14th, there's a social media day of action where multiple organizations will mobilize grassroots activists to sound the alarm about this rate increase. If you sign the petition, you'll get an email about how to participate. Visit the link on your screen and in chat to sign the petition telling President Biden that it's time to reclaim Medicare. We are fighting to save lives, and that requires your dedication. It requires you to get into the arena and fight for health care for all. Now I'm going to pass it back to Kate to continue our journey into the harsh realities of American health care. That's right. Thank you, Jen. It is so great to be with you again, and I was so proud to stand with you at our organizing revival in D.C. and again here tonight. So you heard it from Jen. Let's all tell President Biden that enough is enough. No more private insurers taking our tax dollars for their profits when they should be providing our care. Now let's hear from Dr. Raina Young. Dr. Young is a family doctor from Minnesota and we'll hear how our health insurance crisis feels to a healthcare provider. Welcome Dr. Young. Thank you, Kate. I grew up in a family of medical professionals. My dad was a family physician, now retired, who encouraged me to go into family medicine as it was such a rewarding career for him. The difference yeah. in people's lives are enormous. He always felt that the United States healthcare system would eventually improve and that primary care would finally be appreciated for the work that we do. Unfortunately, it has just gotten worse. The most difficult part of our job as physicians should be the actual practice of medicine, the active listening, the ordering of appropriate tests, the diagnoses, and the treatment plans. However, it's now the barriers to practicing medicine put in place by corporate insurers like United Healthcare that have become the hardest parts of our jobs. Patients who have insurance are asking us about the costs of various tests and or procedures, and we don't know the answers. The system is purposefully opaque and complicated, even to us. We can place orders for patients to get certain tests, but we have no way of knowing what their cost might be 
or whether it will get approved by their insurance company or what kind of hoops we'll have to jump through to try to get it covered. Companies like United Healthcare are profiting by denying our patients care. We hear stories all day long from our patients about the costs of things and the financial hardship it even is to come into the clinic to see me. We took an oath when we became doctors to do no harm, but I know that I may cause financial harm by seeing my patients, billing for our services, having them come back for follow-up visits, and so on. I recently had a 90-year-old with a urinary tract infection. We had to choose a special antibiotic for her due to allergies and her kidney function and past resistance patterns from past urinary tract infections. And we got a message from her insurance, which happened to be a Medicare Advantage program, that the prior auth for it could take two to three days, even if we expedited it. For an elderly woman with a urinary tract infection, we were pretty much like, well, should we just get an ICU bed for her now, <laughs> for her sepsis that she's going to have by then? Uh, fortunately, my nurse figured out we could just bypass her insurance completely, and we just had her pay out of pocket for the medication using GoodRx, and she only had to pay $60, and we just did that. Our employers are cracking down on free care, such as providing advice for patients over the phone or through emails, which makes sense from a business perspective. However, as one of my patients said to me in clinic one day, I just wish I lived in a world where I could ask my physician for advice without the fear of going bankrupt. And I started crying with her. We care about our patients. I've been a part of some of my patients' lives for over 20 years now. I hurt when they hurt. It's constant moral injury to us, knowing that with the care we provide, we're also contributing to financial burden. We are burning out and we are hemorrhaging physicians to early retirement or to leaving for non-clinical careers so that they can avoid having to deal with the frustrations of the current medical system. The shortages will worsen. We need help. We need to work together to stop United Healthcare and other corporate insurers from blocking us as doctors from providing the care our patients need. And we need to build the power to win an improved Medicare for all. So private health insurance corporations don't stand between you and the care your doctors say you need. Incredible. Thank you, Dr. Young. Well, y'all heard it. Doctors, nurses, and care providers everywhere hate the profiteering by companies like United through Medicare Advantage as much as we do. Doctors want to provide care, but it's greedy for profit corporations that stand in the way. Now, I'm so excited to welcome another of our champions, Carly Morton. I got to stand shoulder to shoulder with Carly in D.C., and through Care Over Cost, Carly was able to get some life-changing and life-saving surgery. Welcome, Carly. Oh, I can't hear you, Carly. Awesome. Hey. You got it. Thank you. Yes, it's true. With Care Over Cost and all of the hard work people's actions did, gathering petition signatures and bringing attention to my case, I was able to finally get the surgery that I needed. That's amazing, Carly, and it's proof, y'all, that win. Sir. But let's go back for a minute to last summer with a video about what it was like for Carly before. more proud I couldn't be of anything. Well, if you hadn't helped me whenever I came in 2017, I probably wouldn't be alive. Very possible. So. And we're hoping the next step takes you over the top. 
<laughs> well, we talked about how there's some things with no cure. We have, I have to, I'm gonna have to live a little differently forever. I know. I have to crush anything that's not liquid, which is actually most of them at this point. Um, anything that liquefies though, I can, I put through the J port of my tube, which is this part where the food goes, bypasses my stomach completely. And then this does go to my stomach. Some medications have to go into this side. Um, but as much can go in this side as possible because the disease exists in my stomach. So anything that goes in there causes me really bad pain that physicians compare the pain of the disease to end stage pancreatic cancer pain. I have been fighting my medical issues in my insurance company off and on for more than a year. I cried and screamed and requested a supervisors. They made it impossible. I thought that that was the end of the road. I'm not getting the surgery, so there's not much of a chance for me. We reached out to People's Action, and they gathered together around me and helped me fight my insurance company. And then when that change happened, it was like all this hope just went inside of me. And I felt not just hopeful, but I felt like I had because of what I had survived and experienced, the special kind of power and energy in me, um, pushing me to make things different. I want it to be different for everybody. My name is Doyle, and I'm with Progressive Maryland. I stand today for clean air. So my name is Stephanie Johnson, and I'm representing the Vocal Kentucky. And we're fighting for political power. And that is why we are launching the Organizing Revive. Hi everybody, my name is Carly Morton and I'm really excited to be here today. Every person should have free access to high quality health care. This is a human right, and this is why advocating for change is so damn important. Wow. That brings back so many emotions for me, Carly. And I'm so glad that you're here with us tonight and that you're feeling so much stronger. So tell us what's happened since I last saw you. So um, on July 20th, 2023, I had my open stomach surgery. My surgery was a success and it changed my life. For the first time, I'm able to eat without pain or digestive distress. I enjoy eating so many different foods now, pumpkin spice, stir fry, and my absolute favorite is sushi. I also love fresh fruit. Since the surgery, I have gained both weight and muscle and have progressed from physical therapy for post sepsis issues to actual strength training. From the time that I was on the feeding tube and at my lowest weight to now, I've happily gained 33 pounds and have significantly increased my muscle mass. I have seen even progressed to being able to deadlift 150 pounds. Most importantly, nearly all of my chronic conditions have stabilized, including my autoimmune issues. I am no longer chronically malnourished, I am off the feeding tube, and my lab work is excellent. There are a few things left to stabilize, but overall, I am leaps and bounds healthier than I was or ever have been in my life. I feel so much stronger than I ever really have. And I feel confident that I could beat those odds that come with my medical issues and history of septic infections. To say that this surgery improved the quality of my life is an understatement. I don't think I ever really fully lived before. I am really everything, even the small things, so much right now because they are so surreal without the intensive pain and lack of energy due to malnourishment. I don't feel scared that I'm going to die or doomed to a life of pain anymore. I feel hopeful for my future, which I've never felt before. This surgery saved me 100%. Unfortunately, I do have a negative update regarding United Healthcare. They are still refusing to pay for the costs of the surgery. 
My surgeon's office is fighting with them and they are not asking me to pay for anything or take any action at this time. But for me, this means that I still have the threat of a large bill that I will never be able to pay looming over my head, a mental and emotional stressor that I should never have to worry about or face. The way that those of us who are dependent on insurance plans like United Healthcare have to fight for our care is absolutely detrimental to our mental and emotional health. And changes to the system are absolutely necessary at this point. But I will say, I'm not going to pay for this surgery. It is estimated to be between 50 and $80,000 for the cost of everything altogether, which is an atrocity in itself because it was life-saving care. Regardless, I got less than $1,000 per month to live off of from Social Security, and I have debt because I can't always afford the things that I need right now. I'm still in the recovery process, and I don't know what the future holds for me, whether I will be able to work part or full time or what I will be doing. What I do know is that I spent the first 30 years of my life suffering terribly because of this disease, and now I don't have to. So I'm gonna live as much as I can. I deserve that. I deserve health and happiness and peace I shouldn't have to worry about and or be forced to break my back over an 80 gram bill that was never supposed to be my responsibility and is in fact not my responsibility. Healthcare is a basic need and a human right. I shouldn't have to kill myself trying to afford the things I need to save myself and I won't. I will continue to advocate for widespread change and help other people obtain the care they need as much as I can now. Thank you. Back to you, Kate. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. Healthcare is a human right. Carly, I'm so glad that with Care Over Cost, you were able to get the care that you need and that you're still fighting no matter what. We're with you every step. All right, folks, let's do this. Here to tell us how the Care Over Cost campaign works and what you can do is Brandon Williford from another proud People's Action member group, Citizen Action of Wisconsin. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you, Kate. And, I, and like you said, I'm a proud member and organizer with Citizen Action Wisconsin. So if you're like me and Kate, you want to know, what can I do to help? That's what led me to get involved in the Care Over Cost campaign so we can fight for people like Carly and Jen and win. So if you are being denied care by your insurance company right now, especially with United Healthcare, this section is for you. Let's see in chat, are you or have you been denied care? We know that this, ha this, that this happens hundreds of millions of times every year, every year. But the good news is we can fight back and win. In addition to Carly, Care for Cost won care for 16 people who, we were, who were being denied care last year. Now that's huge, but we can do a whole lot more. So how do we do it? We go public. We work with people who are being denied care to go public. Why is that important? It turns out these big, bad companies respond to public pressure. And it helps individuals get care. But it also rings the alarm bell for other people. A whole lot of us find our insurance company annoying, but until you get really sick or injured, you may not realize these companies frequently won't be there when you need them the most. So we want, we want to let people know what's happening so they realize we need to get our elected officials to transform the system to stop these companies from denying our care. Sounds good? So the most important thing you can do if you or a loved one is being denied care is go to our website, www careofacost.org and click on the link to share your story. That's the first and most important step. If we can help, we'll our awesome volunteers who help appeal their care denials, who help people appeal their care denials. Did you know that less than 0.2% of people when they've been denied care actually get involved in the appeals process? The process is far from perfect, but sometimes it works. 
So we work with you to get your documents together, including an in-depth description of your plan and the denial letter from your insurance company to figure out how we can file an appeal to disagree with the denial. The next thing we do is mount a public pressure campaign. What that means is we work with you to publicly call out your care denial. And that's what we did with Carly to win her care. And that's what we are doing with Jen. This includes things like petitions where we ask people to sign on to a letter demanding the insurance provided care. But we, we can also make a video of you talking about your case and push it out on social media. We ask people to tag the insurance company and demand that they give you care. And guess what? They hear us. We directly reach out to company CEOs and we even get elected officials involved, like US centers when they can help, when they can help. Now we can't promise that we'll be able to help everyone. And we can't promise that we'll win. But we think that the more of us fighting back is the key. So if you haven't yet, go to our careofrecost.org to share your claim denial story. To find out more information about appealing claim denials and research on claim denials, make sure to check out Windows Blog and this website, which one of our awesome National Appeals Team volunteers named Mike put together. Uh, we're sharing the link in the chat. Please check it out. Now remember, our healthcare is under attack right now from all sides by greedy private insurance companies like United Healthcare. And a big part of how they do this is by looting Medicare to boost their profits. So I'll send it back to Kate to remind us what we can do right now to stop it. Kate. Thanks so much, Brandon. You know, that, that is a tiny percentage of us that appeal, but even that tiny percentage, there are so many denials that's still hundreds and thousands of us that can be getting together and fighting together and winning. So now that you all know what to do, if you've been denied care, tell us your story and find out how we can, you can get involved. Sign our petition and tell President Biden to stop the looting of Medicare right now. President Biden, you told us in your State of the Union that you want big corporations to pay their fair share and not take advantage of us. It's time for you to tell giant corporations like United Health that even if they don't care, you do, like my governor, J.B. Pritzker, did today. And that you'll step up and defend Medicare from all the ways that private companies try to take our tax dollars and boost their profits. Now, here's some good news. When we fight, we win. I've seen it myself through care over cost. And denials of care affect one of us, it affects all of us, us and our loved ones. Health insurance corporations do not care when they take our money and keep it for themselves. They want it all. And they want this to be difficult. They want us to give up. They want us to accept that they're denying our care, but we will not give up. There are almost a million claims denials every day. Tonight, we've heard a few examples of how we've won life-saving care, but it's nowhere near enough. Imagine what more we could do when we all fight together. So to close us out, I'd like to hand things back to Jen Coffey with Be A Hero in New Hampshire to tell us one more time what we can do right now. But first, I'd like to thank all of you and all the organizations that came together tonight to create this event to build a bigger movement. Because together, we are strong. And when we fight, that's right, we win. Thank you all, and take it away, Jen. You must sign and share the petition. Listening to everyone's stories, it's alarming. Dr. Young's story reminds me of the fight I'm in right now to get my provider paid. He's the only MD in my state providing the specialized care and treatment I need to live. Now I have to worry he could be forced to close his doors or sell to a company like United Healthcare because he can't pay the bills or even his staff. These companies use every excuse to delay and deny payments to the providers that are saving our lives. United Healthcare paid my doctor less than $2 for my life saving four hour infusion. $2. I can't do this alone. I need you to sign the petition and share it far and wide. Share it every way that you can. It's going to take all of us to stop greedy private insurers like United from gobbling up our health care. In the petition, we must tell President Biden to reclaim Medicare. 